Hello, and welcome to the Knitworthy Podcast Project Craft Tutorials. This time, we're going to be going to knitworthypodcast.com, mm -hmm. and we're going to be clicking on the page that is for Project Craft, and we are going to be printing out the printables that are on that page, and they are things to enhance your Project Craft journal. We have titles. We have title banners and we have a envelope and we have a dedication page. Yes. So three items, one tutorial. Wonderful. All right, Join let's us. get started. Are you ready, Bree? I'm ready. All right, let's start. Um, these uh, printouts that we have came from the Knitworthy podcast site. They are on the tab that is uh, titled Project Craft. Okay. We have uh, right now three, count them, three different printables. Perfect. And um, this particular one is a dedication page. It can go on this side or it can go anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. But you can see that it is, it is drawn so that you can um, cut in a circle and it will match, mimic the circle on the right. Mm -hmm. You could use it on a cover, certainly, like this. Mm -hmm. um, but you would have to lose some of this. So you'll just have to judge by where you're using it. But it is sized to use on the right side. Now, Brianne, where do you want your dedication page to go? I'm rebellious, and so I would like for <laughs> mine to go right here. Okay. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're just going to cut out um, this would be your cut line normally right here mm -hmm. and instead we're going to have you cut a square and uh, eyeball you can see here that this line lines up pretty much like this so you can s decide how much reveal you want of your paper that you've put here mm -hmm. and uh, you could just cut on this darker line here and then you'd be able to see your green paper and your dedication page That's what sounds true. good to you uh, I think I'm going to cut around this dark line right here. All right, so why don't you get busy doing that? Okay. With these Tim Holtz Tonic Studios yes. scissors. They are meant, they cut a wide variety of materials. And you can keep cutting, hon. Okay. And they're meant to cut a wide variety of materials. And they um, are a non stick surface, which is really good if you're doing crafty things and trying to uh, not have everything stick to your scissors. Sticky scissors don't cut very well. That's true. And uh, you can certainly just eyeball it like Brienne is doing, but if you have a paper trimmer, that's that's an okay thing too. Hold it down more. Let me hold it toward the table, Bree, so they can see. Okay. Um, I have printed the, the uh, printouts on thicker copy paper. I have chosen paper. I have an inkjet printer. I know that laser jets are usually better for this kind of thing, but I don't have one. So I use a, um, I believe it's 60 pound laser jet paper, and laser paper, and I use it in my inkjet printer. It works just fine. But okay, so Brianne's got her dedication page cut out, Brianda. You want to write the year on it and sign it. I used my um, Ravelry name, which is Stony Brook. It's the name I'm known in social media, but you can use whatever name you like. If you were doing this for a gift, it'd be a fun, fun idea, wouldn't it? It would. Okay, so we have used, um, in prior tutorials, we used Aline's Turbo Tacky Glue. This time, I want to go and use um, score tape. Brianne, if you could show them what score tape packaging looks like. I really like it because you do not get um, you do not get the wrinkling of the paper with score tape, and it's just okay. so much easier. It's a double stick tape. There are more kinds than just this score tape. Uh, it looks like this. And Brianne, I'm going to show you how you use it. Now there is, I think Scotch makes a double stick tape, probably many other people do, but you're just going to run a line down the edge, stick it down, and you, you tear it like you do washi tape. Oh, okay. Okay? 
So I just do a, a border around the outside, okay? And uh, we'll just show you this once and then we'll fast forward from here on so you don't have to learn how to do s score tape on every one. Um, I got mine on Amazon. I've also seen it in um, scrapbooking stores. On Amazon, it actually is called Suk Wang, and I'm not sure why. It says it's distributed by ScorePal, made in Korea. You get 27 yards in a package. How long would you say that that 27 yards would last you? That's a really hard thing to say just because... Um, it just depends on how much you use it. Yeah. So I've been buying doubles. When I buy it, I buy two so I don't run out mid-project. The only thing you'll notice is um, I'm going to pull out while Brienne's finishing up her taping. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but are you able to... I'm trying to show I glued, uh, I already went over that one. If, if you were able to see it well, maybe right there, do you see how the paper's wrinkly? Mm -hmm. This just got a little bit damp from some gluing that I did. I did a collage here. And what happens is the dampness makes the paper wrinkle. Okay. So when you're using score tape, it's a dry product, and so it does not wrinkle. Some of you uh, are fine with using glue stick whatever. I just have not had good luck with that, so I don't use it. All right, Brianne, you're just going to remove the... You go ahead and do your side. I'll do mine. Okay. You're just going to flick the edge. Now, there is a special tool that has a point on it that's good at getting this off, but um, I just use my fingernails, and we'll get this done quicker if we work together, right? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, now just uh, center it where you want it to show up, and then you're just going to burnish the edges down. I don't know what burnishing means. Burnishing means to firmly attach by rubbing. I can do that. I have no idea if that's the Webster's definition, <laughs> but... <laughs> you're not gonna get out your dictionary for me? And this is one of those things too, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's nice and flat before you lay it down, because that particular tape is not forgiving. It won't peel up and give you a second chance like washi tape. Okay, so that looks really nice, Brianne. Thank you. Let me get, see if it sh get, show it all the way. Very nice. Now you can go back in and color that. Okay. Make it look however you want. So you have already done your goals, so your page yes. is done for that. So how about we decide on a spot for you to do your, your second challenge. Okay. We chose a challenge today, didn't we? We did. This was uh, challenge number one, which was doing our crafting goals, so I would like to put uh, the challenge that I was assigned by the random number generator on this page. Okay. Which is challenge number 94. So Brianne has already previously, we have printed out this template, which is the header for a page. You do not have to use it. It's just a, a little fun embellishment if you want to. And so she colored one and cut it out. Mm -hmm and it is ready to put on the page. Now, what side of the page do you want your title to be on? Um, I think I'd like to put it on this side of the page. Okay, now you can just glue it on or washi tape it on, Okay. just like that, or you can back it with a fancy piece of paper. I know we saved some of your scraps. What would you prefer to do? Uh, that's a really great question. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure. What would you recommend, Mom? Well, why don't we go through and demo how to put a backing on it, okay. and then we can, uh, they can imagine what it's like to not put a backing on it. <laughs> okay. So why don't you grab one of your scraps over there. Uh -huh. This, we're gonna use the, the score tape again. Okay. Now what I did, when I did mine, because I had the same size scrap as you did, mm. which had this little tail, mm -hmm. and it fits so beautifully. Perfect. Look at that. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your score tape on the back of this, okay. and uh, you could also use the other side if you prefer. That's pretty. It's a, like a yellow dot. Mm -hmm. I think I might do that. Okay. Probably two pieces is enough for this, top and bottom. The other I'm thing, having a difficult time with this a little bit. You're just going to put the the 
farthest side, this side down first. Once you have that down, you get it, get the angle right, and then you can push it down. Got it. That's my trick favorite way, yes. You just don't want to pull it. Now that was just, that little bubble you got there was just because you pulled it a little bit too tight when you were okay. putting on the paper. So just stick down the left side first because you're right-handed. If you're, if you're left-handed, you could do it opposite. Yes, that's what. That's a good way to do it. Run your finger across. Okay, we are off screen right now. Okay. All right. So, okay, so show them how you got the washi tape on there. I mean the washi tape, the score <laughs> tape. <laughs> I've got it on the top and on okay. the bottom. Let's take that off. Ooh, that wants to take the whole thing off. You can choose to color or not color. Um, Brienne chose these colors while she's doing her other thing. I'll show you. She chose, uh, these are Prismacolor pencils that I had, but you can use anything, markers or whatever. She and chose I, a red, orange, and a gold. Am I just gonna lay this You're down gonna here? center it so that you have equal distance all the way around. Okay. Okay, yep, and then lay it down the middle first. Yeah, great. Okay, and burnish it, meaning just rub it with your finger. If you had a bone folder, this would be a good time to use it. Now all that's left is cutting um, this side and you just mirror image the cut um, so that it is the same on this side as it is he over here. Okay. Now because you have these lines of polka dots, that gives you a little bit of something to go by. That sure does, it's very handy of me, I'm mm -hmm. so smart. You are brilliant. Great. Okay. All right. Now we're going to put two pieces of washi tape on the back of that and it's ready to go on. Of score tape? Or score washi tape. tape. Okay. <laughs> oh dear. One of those days. That's all right. You can place it where you like. And this is a great way to avoid having the fear of the blank page. Once you have your title down, that Brianne's going to be doing challenge 94 on this page. Um, it doesn't feel as intimidating to write on, does it? No, it doesn't, not at all. And it gives you a really nice, um, a really nice way to um, keep track of what's happening because every time you see a banner, you know that there's a, a change in the challenge that's mm -hmm. happening. All right, let's move on. Let's. <laughs> The very next thing we are going to be doing is um, the making of an envelope. Okay. And I put mine in the front. You can also put it in the back. And this is just a place I labeled mine bits and bobs because um, that is what I'm gonna be putting in mine. But this particular printable is also on the Project Craft page. And basically what we're doing, there's some, some vague <laughs> instructions here. and. Here we have the actual flap. And so what we are doing is we are going to be, Brianne, will you cut this out while I describe what we're doing? Yes. Are we making an envelope here? Yes, please. Okay. So while Brianne's cutting, I'm going to be describing, we are going to be taking, at, we had previously used washi tape to connect pages together, two pages at a time. Now we're going to take these two pages and we are going to washi tape the edges the outside edges to create a pocket. Okay? Okay. Now, Would you like to washi tape my pages while I finish? We need to do cutting? the envelope flap first. Okay. And so um, we will patiently wait for you. But Thank one you. of the things I learned is that it's much easier to put the flap on first before you actually washi tape the sides. Okay. Okay. Did you learn that the hard way? I did. Aren't we great learning yes. things? You're being so careful with your cutting. I'm trying. Look at you. It's like Evan, my little five-year-old. <laughs> and I'm almost as good as getting <laughs> on the lines. <laughs> All right. Now, if you like it just the way it is with coloring, you can do it that way, or you can, can you show the piece of paper? I just want to give them an idea. Um, I mounted mine on a piece of paper like this. 
Very so neat. that it would have a, you know, like a mirror image of the front on it. Mm -hmm. So would you like yours plain or would you like paper? Um, I think I would like mine with paper. Okay. Uh, in your case, what I recommend is we really want the flap going to the end so nothing's going to fall out, right? Correct. And so to have it go to both ends, you actually happen to have a line here. Now let me pull this up so they can see that you have a line here. Are they seeing it? Right here, there's a line right where the end of the page is. I want you to cut along that line. Okay. And then I want you to center the flap on that cut piece of paper. Okay. All right. All right. So let's get busy doing that. All right. So Brianna fixed the envelope template, the envelope flap template to her um, matching paper that she used on the front. And we lined it up so that it goes all the way to the edges here. And then um, Brianne trimmed hers. And you want to explain how you decided what to do? Um, well, Mom said that the best thing to do would be to be able to make sure that it's the full length of the page like this so that nothing comes out. And then um, we brought it down just a little bit to make sure that nothing, you know, was flighty and tried to escape. And luckily this page has lines on it, so we follow the lines down and across and back up again and uh, then cut across here. And I think that looked pretty good. It looks great. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're ready to attach. And what we're going to do, because we, um, do you want your flap opening this way or do you want it opening up on the next page? I think I'd like it opening up on the front. Okay, so you want to see it when you first open. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, we're going to attach it to the back first. Okay. We're going to turn that first page and we are going to, let me do this, here. We are going to washi tape this flap to the edge of the second page. Okay. All right, so this is the, this is the first page. We open it and we're going to, we turned the flap upside down and we're going to washi tape this here and it needs to be able to bend. So we don't want to get it so tightly together that it stays sticking out. We want the washi tape to be, have a little gap between the edge of the paper and the edge of the flap. And that will allow us to be able to turn it. And we are going to washi tape this side and then we're going to turn the page and we are going to washi tape this side also. Okay. If you don't want washi tape showing on this side, then you can use clear tape. And Bram will decide that. We'll pop back in after we've done our taping. There you go. Okay. All right. Brianne decided she wanted to use clear tape instead of washi tape, which is a great idea. And so she used a link that was a little bit longer, which is great because that makes sure you get full coverage to the end. And she's just trimming off the little bits. She's put tape on the front and the back of this hinged joint that she's created. So, Brianne, are you ready for the next step? I am ready. All right. So we're gonna turn this page back and head toward the front of our book again. Okay. Okay. Now, one of the things I found was a little bit easier was to turn, in order to get your hand in here easier, um, I would turn down the bed sheets, basically. Let's get back on screen. I would turn down the bed sheets of this first page and turn it evenly and fold it. Just however far down would make it easier to get your hand in. That's all you're trying to do there. Okay. And um, give it a nice run with your fingernail or a bone folder. And now we're ready to do the sides. Do you want to do, we're going to tape the side of the envelope from here. Okay. To here. Okay. Okay. You may tape with washi tape or with regular tape. What do you like? I think I'm going to stick with the regular tape. Okay. So Brianne, why don't you go ahead and do that. Okay. And what you're going to do, we're going to do it just like we did washi tape. We're going to, um, we are going to do a length of tape from here to here where half of it is on the page. The other half is going to get folded on to the back of our envelope flap page. Okay. All right. So. Let's give that a try. Okay. 
Now with transparent tape, it is oh so easy to see if you're getting half on, half off. Yes. And you've done a beautiful job. Thank you. Now I would just go ahead, let's go ahead and turn the page, shall we? And um, put the tape uh, folded over on the other side. Let's make sure we run our hands. Let's get back on screen here and run our hands straight. I'll hold it for you. Thank you. That way we don't get it uh, with a bubble or a little bit off. We want to make sure the two pages are perfectly married. Great. Okay. All right. So let's turn the book around. Do the same thing on the top part. With the washi tape that you've already put on here, this is actually a nice little detail. Mm -hmm. Thank Looks you. Pretty. So that worked out nicely. And I like the I like the um, clear tape just as well as I like the washi tape. So if someone doesn't have washi, I have a little bit of extra here. So let's trim that. Let's not go over. Okay. And I'm sure there are many other ways that one could do an envelope like this. This is just the way that we're trying this time. And um, if you have a better idea, I actually, I saw someone on the group had come up with a great solution for attaching an envelope to the back of their journal. And so check out the Ravelry group um, for that idea. Is it Swag Co? I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now let's turn your back your book back the way it was and we'll finish this up. Let's turn it around. Okay. Get right side up. All right. Isn't that adorable? I love that. So now we are just going to run our fingernail or a bone folder along this edge. Now, <clears throat> I added a little ribbon to mine at the bottom just because I loved the look and I wanted to show everybody how to do it. Okay. So I have um, a length of, that's actually seam binding. I keep it on hand just because I like using it in crafting. And I have these, um, this is Fiskars, a hole cutter. It makes a hole that size. And Brianne, what I did was I lined it up on the page centered on under the heart but where you're going to get the hole wherever that dot is so why don't you decide where you want on that line okay where do you want your hole and then we'll I'll show you how we attach the ribbon okay to the hole um I like it right there okay then go ahead and punch it out does that look to be centered to you it does okay you want to just do it like scissors yeah there you go all right do it. That one does a nice, th the thing I like about this hole punch is, um, actually, can you turn that light on, Brianne? Absolutely. I didn't realize we oh, didn't... It's, on. it's on. Oh, it is on. Okay. This has a, it's going to go all over probably, but it has a little catcher for the holes. It used to be my mom's pet peeve that um, the holes would go all over when my dad would be using his hole puncher. So this one has a little tray to catch them, and that's why I love these Fiskars hole punch. They're great. Okay, so what I found when I put my ribbon through was that it kept wanting to slide out because it's a slippery ribbon. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up securing um, the ribbon on mine with the Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. And it makes the cutest little punch. Let me get something to demo with. It, it's a... Uh, it staples, the tiniest little staples. Oh, those are petite. That's compared to my finger. Look at, they're tiny. And what I love is that it is so easy to staple with them because of the way the hand grip is. Um, it is really easy. They work and function just like big boy staples, but <laughs> they are just easier to use. So let's first um, find the center of your ribbon okay. and keep it folded. And then you're going to put the ribbon through from the front, okay? So you're going to take this part of the ribbon, the mm -hmm. folded edge, and you're going to feed it through the hole. Okay. And then just get a little point and then go to the other side and pull it through just like you're doing is great. 
Now stop. You have a little loop here, right here. Mm -hmm. Open that loop and you're going to stick the tails through the center of that loop that you just poked through. You can just feed them tails in or whatever you want to do, just as long as they get in there is all that matters. And it's just, a, a, I think, a really fun embellishment. Yes, you pull it exactly like that. And um, if you want it a little tighter, you just do a little bit of adjusting like that. Okay. Is that how you like it? I love that. All right, then what I did was I took a little staple and I put the staple right where the line of that envelope is. So it kind of disguised it a little bit, but it okay. won't come untied, which is what it was trying to do. Mm. So if you could give it a little staple and line it up with the stitches that are on the envelope flap, that way it'll kind of blend in with the stitches and look like it's supposed to be there. as good as it's gonna get great now you'll probably you can leave these long or you can trim them up so they don't get into the fold I trimmed mine what would you like to do I like them long you like them long mm -hmm. did you want to do anything different with them or you like them no. the way they are I like them just the way they okay. are okay is that not adorable that's so cute and so when you open it up you can easily get your hand in and so you can put if you cut out extra challenge uh, banners or whatever, mm -hmm. or you have post-it notes, whatever, it's going to stay in there and it's not going to go anywhere. Perfect. How do we like that? I love it. Was it hard or easy? Easy. Awesome. And I can't wait to color them. Good. Well, you did a great job, Bree. Thank you. I love what you did. Thank you. Oh.